How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Well, it finally happened. Uh, you know, if you've watched my channel at all, uh, you've seen some of the deals I've gotten uh, with auction lots and uh, some of the good stuff I've got. Uh, this time, um, it wasn't so great. This uh, auction that I participated in uh, got a little out of hand, and um, I kind of got charged quite a bit for this pile of comics you see right here on the screen. Um, but basically what happened was this is an auction house uh, through out of Utah and, um, the auction started on February 24th and the bid was $25 and I saw some books that I was interested in, in the lot. So, um, I bid, uh, it got up to, um, like $75 and I bid $85.33. Or so I thought I did. But what I really did was I had entered a bid of $8,533. So um, that happened on 225, like one day into the auction. I immediately wrote the auction house and said, hey, that was a big mistake. I didn't want to bid $8,000. I only wanted to bid $85.33 for this pile of books. I think there's like 50 books in this in the, in the lot. And uh, so I wrote them on the day that I made the the, um, the bid at two o'clock and they answered me back um, on 226 a day later. And they basically said, here's the reply they sent me. They said, good day. We have received your request. By the agreement signed when opening an account, you're responsible for all bids placed. Unfortunately for our location, we do not offer a bid cancellation. The item will remain available until the payment deadline passes, and then we will be relisted. Thank you for your support. That's all fine and good, but what happens is if you don't claim your item, they consider it a, a donation, and then they'll put it up for bid anyway. So um, what happened was is that so I bid the $8,530 by mistake. Then on $225, uh, somebody bid $199.69 at 5 p.m., then another person bid um, $245 on $225 at $602. And then somebody out of the blue at like 42, 40 minutes later bid $687.99. And so then since I had my $8,000 bid in there, I ended up winning this lot of comic books for $688.99 um, because, you know, you already had your bid in there. So I got all these books and I'm trying to figure out like why anybody in their right mind would bid $687 for this lot. There were some books that I was interested in and when we start looking at them, I'll show you, but um, I don't know if I can somehow pay, sell some of these to recoup this co uh, thing, my, uh, my bid or not. Uh, but I just thought it was really bad practice that, I mean, obviously it was a huge mistake on my part to, uh, for, to move the decimal point, but you'd think they'd understand that, the auction house. But, you know, what are you going to do? Um, I didn't want to burn any bridges, but I'm never going to buy from this seller auction place again. They're, they're out of Utah. So, but anyway, I'll show you these books. Maybe if you can uh, put in the comments below, like what books might be something that I could try and sell. I was really, really interested in a couple of these books. Um, here, we'll just start going through them and I'll show you what I, what I have in this pile. <clears throat> so, as usual, um, let me try and get this so that we can get the pictures in there. Um, I There's a couple of trade paperbacks. So there's a Ghostbusters 35th anniversary um, trade that has the comic books um, that IDW released in conjunction with the 35th anniversary of the Ghostbusters. There's the real Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters, the extreme Ghostbusters, and then the lady Ghostbusters. So that was in here. I don't think that anybody would want to spend this kind of $687 on that. Uh, then there was a Winona, Winona Earp, Bad Day of Black Rock trade paperback. Again, don't think that's anything that anybody would really go nuts for out of this lot. But then now these are the ones I was interested in, at least part of them. Uh, they had a bunch of Napoleon Dynamites. So... Um, Napoleon Dynamite number one, cover A, and then here's cover B, <clears throat> but again, I don't think these are high value. Um, my son th seems to think that 
since the auction house knew that I had that bid up there for $8,500 that somebody might have, that works for them, um, bid it up like a snipe bit, sniping bid, even that, knowing that they would never win. I'm just, I mean, I guess I'm kind of glad that they only did $680. I mean, it could have got could have been a lot worse. Um, here's issue number one: retailer incentive cover for Napoleon Dynamite. Um, here's another Napoleon Dynamite photo cover. Let me kind of center this here. Uh, convention convention exclusive cover. Issue number two: retailer incentive cover. And then Napoleon Dynamite's Valentine's Day special. So I was interested in this part of the lot. And um, so that's one of the main reasons I bid on, on these books. So then the next section here, the next couple of books, is something. Um, there's this The Kill Lock issue number one. These, By, by the way, these, I think these are all IDW comics. <clears throat> so again, you know, I don't know why anybody would bid so high. Unless there's something I don't know. Um, then there was Transformers Galaxies number one. Uh, Crow, the Crow one shot, Hark the Herald. <clears throat> then there was the Crow Lethe number one, cover A. Now, if this was the um, Brandon, Brandon Lee cover, that I could make my money back easily. Um, here's here's number two of the same series there, <clears throat> and number three. So I don't know. I think this is Peach Momoka, maybe, <clears throat> who did the covers there. So you got those. <clears throat> here's something called Read Only Memories, issue number one, cover A. Um, Voyage to the Stars. Um, didn't know too much about this one either. Let me <clears throat> move these out of here. I'm going to leave these trade paperbacks up here to hold them because I don't have bags and boards on all of these yet. <clears throat> so, Voyage to the Stars. This is an homage to the Goonies poster, I believe. Voyage to the Stars number two, cover B. <clears throat> and Voyage to the Stars number three, cover B. Then there's Glow versus the Baby Face, issue number one. Cover A and issue number one, cover B. Again, don't think this is why people were buying these. Uh, something called Wellington, <coughs> issue number one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Mountainhead, issue number one. Marvel Action Chillers, issue number one, featuring Iron Man with Iron Heart and uh, Doctor Strange. Marvel Action Classics featuring Ant-Man. Uh, the Comic Book History of Animation cover A, issue number one. Scarant Hood number two. Sleeping Beauties uh, number two. And number three. Then we have Goosebumps, Secrets of the Swamp, number one. Oh, let me get over this. <clears throat> uh, Dying is Easy, issue number one, cover B. Dying is Easy, issue number one, Retailer Incentive B cover. Dying is Easy, number two, cover B. Dying is Easy, cover A, number three. And Dying is Easy, number four, retailer incentive B cover. Um, again, I don't think that's a really hot, popular comic book that people would want to spend $600 on. Um, let me get rid of these. Then we have I Can Sell You a Body, issue number one. I Can Sell You a Body, issue number two. 
I can sell you a body issue number three. Don't know too much about that series. Then there's a couple of issues here. Batman, the Max, Arkham Dreams. Um, this is a collection of one through three of the series. And then there's Batman, the Max, issue number four, cover retailer incentive. Then just a random X-Men 173, not even in that great a shape. And then here's the other set of books that I was really interested in buying out of this lot was Cobra Kai. So I got Cobra Kai issue number one, cover A. And these are the ones I wouldn't want to sell, but I might have to sell to make my money back on this lot. Here's issue number one, cover B. Here's Cobra Kai issue number one, retail incentive A cover. Uh, issue number one, B cover re retailer incentive. Maybe when the next season comes out, these will be super hot and I can maybe sell them. And then here's, um, this is retailer, uh, I don't know, RE cover A. So those are the ones that I'm in interested in. And then here's Ghostbusters year one cover A featuring Winston. Ghostbusters year one. Cover A, issue number two. It's another one I was interested in. Here's some Cantos. I thought these might be something that I might be able to sell. Canto number two, The Hollow Men. Cover, retailer incentive. Or, or I, what, I don't know what RE means. Uh, here's RIB, retailer incentive B cover. Canto number two, or Canto two, The Hollow Men. Canto two, The Hollow Men number three, or number two. Canto to the Hollow Men, number three, retailer incentive. Uh, here's a one shot, Canto and the Clockwork Fairies, retailer incentive B cover. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, number one, Spine of the World. Uh, Usagi Ujimbo, issue number one. And then these are the other ones that I thought might have been something, but it ends up, I thought it was the original uh, run, but it's really just a facsimile. So that doesn't really do me too good. Um, there's a retailer incentive <coughs> convention um, exclusive of lock and key number one. And then this one I thought was first print, but this is just a facsimile uh, reprint. Uh, here's lock and key number one retailer incentive a here's another number one um here's number two uh this one i this is another one that i wanted because i like this cover it's a toy toy uh, photo variant transformers and back to the future um Pandemica number one. This was hot a while ago during COVID, I think. Uh, this one is um, a exclusive cover. Um, Glow versus Babyface uh, retailer and son of. Then there was finally some Star Wars in here. Star Wars Adventures, One Shot Shadows of Vader's Castle. <clears throat> um, Return to Vader's Castle, number one. Return to Raiders Castle number two. Star Wars Adventures number one. Uh, Star Trek Voyager Mirrors and Smoke one shot. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Jenica number two, cover A. Sonic the Hedgehog um, Convention exclusive cover number one. And then the last one in here was The Last Ronin, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, this is an issue one retailer exclusive, and I think there's like 500 of those that they printed of this cover. But still, it's not, I think I looked it up and it's only like maybe selling for $20. So again, I mean, I had to pay $688 for these comics, and 
I'm still trying to figure out why somebody would bid $687 <coughs> for this lot, um, unless they thought the lock and key was a first printing, um, but you don't really know until you get it. And like I said, I, it's a facsimile. So, um, but anyway, I just thought I'd share this lot with you and tell you my sad story about how I had overpaid for this lot, unless you guys can tell me in the comments if there's something that I might be able to sell um, or that you might be interested in and buying that would try and help me recoup some of the costs. I did get into a payment plan um, through PayPal, so I only I only have I don't have to pay the whole thing at one time. It's going to be spread over a series of months. But again, you know, sometimes it happens. I've been really lucky getting some really good stuff, super cheap. But this is the one time that an auction. Um, kind of bit me in the butt and um I didn't want to uh like I said earlier I didn't want to really like um like not that it burned my bridges but um if I didn't pay for it they would just sell it again and keep my $688 so um you know what are you gonna do but anyway uh if you like this content uh please go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't subscribed uh please consider subscribing um, I usually put a lot better uh, content comic book wise in my uh, auction lots, but like I said, I basically was just or I just wanted to get those Cobra Kai's and the Napoleon Dynamites, and <clears throat> I got the rest of this stuff, and I don't know if it's even worth anything or um, I I mean I'm sure it's it's good reading, but um, it just seems awfully expensive. But Again, I want to thank all my subscribers and uh, thank everybody for watching and sticking to the end. Again, please feel free to comment below um, and just be careful when you're auction when you're if you're in auctions to make sure you put the decimal point in the right place. Um, you know, it happens to everybody. But other than that, I'm going to let you go. Um, good luck out there hunting for comics, and I will see you all next time. Bye.